Well, Brad's um, one of the most exciting new plays I've read in a long time by John Logan, who is a Chicago playwright, essentially, who began his career at Northwestern, and whom I worked with very early on at the Goodman Theater. And he subsequently went on to great, great fame and fortune and success uh, in movies and back to the theater with Red, which is an amazing portrait of the great American painter Mark Rothko at age 55, uh, working on a series of paintings that became known as the Seagram paintings that were commissioned for the Four Seasons restaurant in the late 1950s. And the play opens with he and a new assistant by the name of Ken uh, getting to know each other uh, and sort of passing a bit of a job interview in which Ken is going to assist him on the making of these great murals over a two-year period. And so what happens is we see over the two years the relationship, which is almost father-son, mentor, teacher-student, uh, sometimes antagonist, protagonist. Uh, but also it's a portrait of the artist uh, and the complexity of a life devoted to making art. It is difficult, it's joyous, it's painful. Uh, and with Mark Rothko, you have a very, very dynamic, complex figure. And so as a result, his relationship with his young assistant is going to be dynamic but complex. I mean, I think in many ways it's, it's, it's a play that comes out of John's soul. It's a bit about, well, it's about anybody who makes art and the difficulty of making art. Not just the process of personalizing it and bringing it into the world, but of also having that work received by critics, by audiences, by patrons. It's about art versus commercialism. Uh, it's about the seriousness of art. It's about how many people do not take art seriously. And these are all subjects which I think about a great deal. So from the moment I read it, the play had a very strong personal resonance. What I think is kind of amazing about the play is that there have been many, many works about painters or writers but you never actually see them at work. And one of the things that excites me about this play is John Logan puts us in the studio, in the Bowery in 1957, where you actually see the act of painting happen. And it's extraordinarily sensual and physical. And you see Rothko and his assistant Ken with brushes making these giant broad strokes and priming a canvas after they've stretched the canvas, they built the frame, they haul up the frame, they, you see them splashing red and yellow and black. And it becomes a very dynamic thing, I think, for an audience. And it becomes a way, I think, in for an audience to understand the life of an artist. I think that Mark Rothko, who famously came out of a group of abstract expressionism, uh, and they were rebelling against more realistic, figurative drawing, before them, and they sort of define themselves, uh, you know, like Jackson Pollock, who's a good friend of Rothko's. They sort of define themselves as the young Turks of American painting. And the issue with Rothko really is his sort of hyper-articulate ability to discuss his work and to provoke his audience. And he, among that group, was probably the most vocal and, and, and he's bigger than life. He was bigger than life then, he remains bigger in life in the art world. I and mean, he was not a guy who sort of just huddled up in his studio making art. He was out there being interviewed, he was a provocateur, he liked stirring things up. If he didn't like the other people's work, he would talk about it. Uh, so there's a bigger than life quality to Mark Rothko which is extremely exciting. And I think that people who come see the play will, uh, many of them will come in knowing something about Mark Rothko. Many of them will come in knowing something about art. Others will not. So, so in, in some ways, I think that if you know a little bit about contemporary art, or if you know anything about the painter Rothko, I think it's gonna be fascinating. And I think if you don't, you're gonna learn a lot. But both camps are going to see a portrait that is as deep and as rich as, let's say, the character of Willie Loman in Death of a Salesman. It's a creation of a guy who becomes a bigger-than-life character, who embodies the strengths and the flaws of all of us, whether or not we're artists or not. I, I don't want an audience to feel intimidated that they're seeing a play they're not going to understand about art. Because I think that Rothko's 
passion, his fears, his jealousy, uh, is something that everybody can connect to.